about traveling and living in different countries, uh, as well as a reflection on where or what is home. Um, it takes you through my journey from France, where I was born and raised, to Norway, where I moved to when I was uh, only 18, and then to the US, the UK, China, and eventually to Australia. I chose to self-publish as well, like all of us, um, for three main reasons. And the first one is I wanted to keep full creative control. The second one is I wanted to ensure speed to publication. And the third one is, well, to be honest, I was pretty scared of all the potential rejection. <laughs> anyway, today I thought I would share with you uh, the five-step um, publishing process that I followed and also some of the tips uh, that I, from my learnings along the way. So the first step is writing. Uh, this is essential and pretty obvious, so I'm not going to spend any time on it today. Um, the second step of the process is the editing. So once you have a manuscript, it's time to share it with a few trusted friends and family members to get their feedback. Um, as my book is a memoir, I first shared it with uh, my close family and my partner, and I asked them, be honest with me, I said, should I go any further? A and B, are you okay with being in a book? Unsurprisingly, they were super excited. So, <laughs> so there I was continuing on to the next stage. And uh, next, I got 13 uh, family and friends to read the book and give me uh, their very detailed feedback. I thought that was super useful. It actually led me to change about 20 to 25 percent of the content and even the end of the book. Um, Top tip on that would be prepare in advance a questionnaire with maybe like 10 or 15 precise questions so that you actually get their feedback in a like consistent and uh, clear manner rather than scattered all over the place. After you've done that, it's time to work with a professional editor. And same as Terry, I was told this is something you shouldn't miss and I'm, I'm glad I didn't. Um, Self-publishing, one of the main challenges, obviously, is that you'll most probably be financing your project on your own, from A to Z. But if there's one thing I would say don't compromise on and, don't, uh, and make sure you invest in, that's a professional editor. So the third step of the journey is design. Starting with the cover, of course. Um, a cover is so important. Uh, I know people say, don't judge a book by its cover, but honestly, I haven't met anyone who doesn't. Um, so personally, I used a website called uh, 99designs. Uh, I thought it was amazing for writers um, because you can um, send your brief out and you, get, uh, you pay one fee up front and then you get minimum 30 different designers sending you uh, different covers and you can choose the one that you like the most. Um, the top tip here would be um, test your cover once you have it, or maybe you have a top three. Then test it on a few people from your target audience. Um, they're your potential readers, so if they like it, you'll be off to a great start. The uh, other aspect of uh, de design is typesetting. So that's a word, personally, I'd never heard of before, and that's not because I'm French. I think it's because it's not a very common word. <laughs> um, if you haven't heard of it, maybe check it out, but essentially it means getting uh, your manuscript and changing it, transforming it into a book format. And usually it means working with a graphic designer, unless you want to do it yourself. There are a few resources out there that you can uh, do it on your own. The fourth step of the process is publishing. So with publishing, we have printing. Um, there are so many options for printing out there. Uh, like Terry mentioned, I went with Ingram Spark as well for my first book. Um, the reason for me was that they could print in both Australia and in France, same rate. Um, and because I'm French and I have family, I have a distribution network in France. <laughs> I have family and friends who sell my book. <laughs> um, so I, um, I decided to go with them for that reason. However, um, for my upcoming uh, children's book, um, which is called Where Are You From? I'm working with another uh, printing company. Uh, they're called Kdex Communications. They're a local printer. Uh, and the reason for that is that they are the only ones who were able to print the size that I wanted. Um, the other part of publishing is uh, to set up your sales channels. So sales channels can be online, like obviously your own website, that's really important. 
uh, but also third parties like Amazon, Smashwords, etc. Um, and offline, offline bookstores, uh, which you can access via a distributor like Dennis and Jones Associate. I'm with them as well. I saw your book there actually as well. <laughs> Small world. Um, uh, or you can go directly to bookstores, but that can be really challenging. Um, you can think about other stores as well. For example, my book is uh, in a bakery, a French bakery. Uh, because I'm a French author and they thought it would be a great fit, so I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And they actually outperformed all of the bookstores that my book is in at the moment. <laughs> so, um, and the other uh, thing you can think of is other partnerships. For example, say your book is about learning and development. Maybe you can approach uh, HR teams in corporate companies and see if they would be interested in having it in their induction pack, for example. Um, so my top tip here would be think both inside and outside the box and try to set up as many sales channels as you can before you actually launch your book. And so the fifth and final step on the, of the process is the marketing. Um, what better way to kick things off than uh, by having a book launch? Uh, I can't stress enough how important that is to create a bit of a buzz around, around your book and draw attention. Um, my tip here, oh, there, I have so many tips on book launches, I love doing events, but I picked one. Um, and it would be uh, to get as much content as you can, like pictures, videos from your book launch, so that then you can use it on your social media, on your website, and you can keep the momentum going for longer. Um, and also, in the meantime, when you're crashing and thinking, oh, I'm so tired, you can still have content and push it out there and pretend you're so excited still. <laughs> Um, having launched your book, then it's all about the promotion. Um, okay, this is where I am now because I launched uh, Where To Next two months ago. So I'm right in the middle of the, the promotion and I'm going to be honest with you, it's super challenging. <laughs> um, because the thing is, you have to try everything, everything you can think of. You know, I'm reaching out to the mayor of my hometown just to see if he wants to talk about me to, you know, the random English town that they work with in terms of like, oh, French English exchange, you know. This is the kind of thing that you're doing and you don't know, you have no idea which one of these things is actually going to work. Is it going to be community radio? Is it going to be TV? Is it going to be this random person that you meet in a cafe and that has this random contact with someone else? So you really just have to get out there and try as many things as you can. And you do get tired, but it's, I think, all about persevering. If you believe in your project, you're the best advocate for it. Um, so in conclusion, this was an overview of the five steps uh, that I followed for self-publishing. So writing, editing, designing, publishing, and finally, marketing. Um, overall, I've enjoyed my self-publishing journey. Um, I've, honestly, I've learned so much from it, and I've developed new skills like things I never thought I would be doing. So it's been very beneficial from that perspective. Um, however, <laughs> it's not been without struggles and there were many times along the way that I thought, oh, you know what, I'm just gonna give up. You know, it's, not, it's just not gonna happen. Like, who am I kidding? You know the imposter syndrome? But yeah, you, I think you get that. Um, but the day that I held the first copy of Where To Next in my hands, and again today, because you can see I'm getting excited, um, I can tell you that it's absolutely 100% worth it. So thank you so much for your attention, and please feel free to come find me uh, in the book fair if you have any questions or want to have a chat. Thank you. Alison, thank you. Hello, my name is Alison Knight. I've written, um, and I started off life as a playwright. And if I go right back to my very earliest writing,